I think it's like it's sort of like the contrast between the book writer and the you know newspaper writer, which is I never have time to prepare for anything, and <laughs> I imagine you sitting in your I sit in my lonely room all day long, right? But um, we literally just met, and I think he was told he was interviewing me just five minutes ago. So <laughs> we'll see where this goes. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be great, though. But I do think TEDx events and TED probably can use more spontaneity. So right. hopefully we'll bring that. Um, you have to tell anyone who's ever wanted to write for a living, uh, right. and this includes me. Has has been rejected, right? I have a file folder still of, you know, when I was 16, I was submitting short stories to the New Yorker and getting <laughs> the form rejection slips. But I think you have the best story about being rejected of all time. Yeah, so I uh, was in Boston. I graduated from college. I locked myself in a room, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. And I wrote nine novels in a year and a half after college, which I don't recommend to anyone. And I sent them out, sent them out, sent them out. And I got about 195 rejection slips. Um, one of the rejection slips was from a janitor at a publishing house because I sent a manuscript to an editor who was no longer working there and it ended up in a trash bin and the janitor took it out and read it and then sent me a rejection letter. <laughs> so I, uh, any struggling writers out there, you know, I had them taped to my walls, <laughs> rejection slips, and, and so I have been rejected by everyone. And yes. today that janitor is probably running the publishing house, right? <laughs> who knows? I don't know. But yeah, that's part of the process, though. And so what, um, you've written a bunch of books, 12 books now. Mm -hmm. There are obviously some books that have been phenomenally successful, some that have been less successful. But like, what attracts you to subject matter? Like, Why did you write about the MIT blackjack team? Right. Why did you write about the founding of Facebook? Well, th it all started for me with the story that ended up being the movie 21, if any of you saw that, about the MIT kids who beat Vegas for millions. I was a, a fiction writer. Um, although a lot of people at the Globe say I'm still a fiction writer, but I was a fiction writer. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, Not that there's any hard feelings, right? <laughs> I, I, um, uh, I used to hang out at a local bar in Boston called Crossroads, and there was a group of, uh, of geeky MIT kids uh, who used to hang out there. Um, and uh, I met them, a girl who was on the team who Kate Bosworth ended up playing in the movie, I didn't know she was a, a blackjack player. She went to college with me, and she was dating one of them. And so she introduced me and said, this guy's a writer. You guys have this great story. And I started going to Vegas with them. And I was going to Vegas every weekend, and they would be you know, strapping a quarter million dollars under their clothes. And it was crazy. And it was better than all of the fiction I had been writing. Um, but it, it happened to be a true story. So I just joined the team for a little while and wrote it. And that's where it started. And then I look for stories with that you know, same fire. And so this is sort of like an episode of This Is Your Life. But so the movie became 21. Uh, we're here in Brookline, Massachusetts. You wouldn't expect there to be a movie star of 21 in the audience. But I see, so Colin, would you wave from the second row? Uh, Colin plays an MIT professor, right, uh, in, right, in the movie 21. Uh, fantastic reviews for that performance, Colin. Uh, <laughs> But his, his acting career didn't take off, and so he married Erica Ebel and uh, now runs a publicly traded robotics company. Oh, so uh, <laughs> quite sad for Colin. <laughs> Um, so the founding of Facebook to me, like I think where we overlap a little bit is I moved back from California in 2007. The thing I was most curious about uh, in, in sort of restarting my Globe column was like, what happened to Facebook? Like, how could that be founded in a Harvard dorm? Uh, you know, kind of start getting the momentum, and yet it didn't wind up being a Boston company. I was curious, like, why did that wind up getting sort of taking root in Palo Alto? Well, part of I mean, it was all basically Mark Zuckerberg, Mark, you know, and Eduardo. And for instance, that story, by the way came to me um, in a 2 a.m. Uh, email. I was sitting at home. The movie 21 was about to come out. And I got an email from a college kid, a Harvard senior. And he said, my best friend co-founded Facebook, and no one's ever heard of him. So I went out for a drink, and in walks Eduardo. Um, and if any of you saw the movie, he looked like the Andrew Garfield, not as good looking as Andrew Garfield, but he was that kind of character. And he walked into the room, and he was extremely upset. And he started off this conversation by saying, Mark Zuckerberg screwed me. And so I was fascinated right there, because that's a good intro to a story. <laughs> um, I didn't know the details. And it turns out, to me, the story was really two geeky guys uh, who were trying to find better ways to get laid. And they created a, a social network, a company, where people like them could be social stars. Now, Mark disagrees with that evaluation of how it all started. But the reason it ended up in California really was that Mark wanted to be there. You know, he left school, uh, he moved out there, and he met Sean Parker. And that's where everything changed. And Sean was you know, the bad boy of Silicon Valley, the Armani-wearing um, you know, cool kid, uh, although he did carry you know, uh, an EpiPen in his pocket because he was allergic to things. And, but he was uh, the cool guy of Silicon Valley, and he brought in Peter Thiel and that kind of money. Um, so that's why it ended up there. 
And who did you, I mean, of, of that cast of characters that we all saw yeah. in the movie, who was the person you didn't get to interview for the book? Where well, you Mark, were like, Mark Zuckerberg would not speak to me. I spent a year trying to talk to Mark. And, you know, as his right, he knew that I was talking to people like the Winklevi twins, uh, like uh, the Winklevi are great, aren't you? You couldn't invent better characters <laughs> than two identical twins, six foot five Olympic rowers, who I genuinely like these guys. I mean, if you meet them, they own who they are. You know, there's no, uh, well, there's pretension, but there's no fakeness. That's who they right. are. They're truly pretentious. Right, and so, yeah. I, <laughs> so they're really good. So I was fascinated by them. I do remember meeting them for the first time in a, in a hotel room, and one of them, I don't remember which one, you really can't tell the difference. He said, uh, <laughs> you look at us and you think, we must be the bad guys in this story. Because if this were an 80s movie, we'd be dressed in skeleton outfits, chasing the karate kid around <laughs> the room. But you know, they ended up, in their minds, they weren't the bad guys in this story. They were guys who felt they were wronged. Um, Mark didn't want to talk to me because he knew I was talking to people other than that and people that he couldn't really control what they were going to say. Um, and, and as his right, he didn't want to tell this story this way. Um, but I felt you know, it was a very true story. I, I told it more from Eduardo's point of view um, from the Winklevi point of view, also from Sean's point of view a little bit. Are you allowed to tell the story? So like while you're working on the book, Eduardo is dating your wife's best friend. Yeah, there was a whole thing going on there. So should we not, should I not no, have asked this I'm question? No, I'm cool with that. She might be watching this. But I, uh, Eduardo kind of, I spent about six months talking to him and to all the different characters that I could talk to. And sort of we were all kind of intersected. And, and, and when I interview someone, I, you really have to get to know them. I mean, you become a part of their life for a period while you're doing a book like that. Then my book proposal leaked onto the internet on a, a website called gawker.com. Um, and that's when everything kind of went crazy. I'd written a 14-page book proposal. Um, and Facebook saw the proposal, and they freaked out. They were like, what are you writing? Eduardo wasn't supposed to be speaking to anyone. He immediately settled with Facebook for what eventually became $2 billion. Part of his settlement agreement was that he could no longer speak to Ben Mesrick ever again. So he cut off all contact with me, he cut off contact with the girl he was dating. Uh, listen, he unfriended you on Facebook? Unfriended me, of course. Uh, you know, and I understand, for $2 billion, I'd probably cut off contact with everybody I know too, right? <laughs> but um, uh, so he disappeared, ran off to Singapore, and, and lives you know, in a big fancy uh, hotel, I think, in Singapore now. I have never spoken to him since. I haven't spoken to him since the movie came out. Uh, hopefully, he liked it. I think it, it, it made him very, very wealthy. Um, so he should be happy about that. But it was this crazy thing where uh, you know, my, my book proposal leaked onto the web, and that kind of created all of this. And so you were telling me in our, in our extensive preparation session right. uh, in the hallway back there, right. uh, you were saying that you pretty much every week when there's something in the news, you get people suggesting, Ben, this should be your next right. book. So, so like, what's some, what's some recent examples you know, of that? I'm very easy to find on the internet. You know, I'm just, uh, uh, and so people tweet me or, or email me. 20 to 30 pitches a week I get from every kind of story you could think of, everything from the Julian Assange starts, you know, story of the world all the way to the, you know, when Brett Favre was texting his penis, uh, you know, the woman who was getting texts of his penis I was getting emails from. So, I mean, you would get contact from any kind of story that happens in the news. And usually it's college kids who've done something wild or stolen something or, or on their way to jail. I get a lot of on the way to jail stories. Um, <laughs> And I sift through them. I think with the Gardner Museum heist, I've gotten at least five pitches from people who say they know where that art is. Um, everything, and some of that's fascinating, but then you kind of look into it and you get closer and you realize it's somebody in prison and you don't want to go there. Um, and uh, oh, the Whitey Bulger case. How many emails did I get out of that? I, I, a dozen emails of everyone involved in the Whitey Bulger case. Um, but for me, it needs to have young people pulling off some sort of scheme, money and sex, and all the things I like to write about, so. <laughs> So what's, um, I guess maybe two last questions I want to ask. I mean, what's the current project or what's the next thing that's coming out? I have three books coming out next year, which I don't recommend to any writers, but um, one of them is a, uh, a thriller about the seven wonders of the world, a Da Vinci Code style thriller. Brett Ratner, the director, um, is actually publishing it with his own imprint and the movie's being made by 20th Century Fox. And then I have a young version of Bringing Down the House. I'm starting a children's series about geeky math science kids, uh, actually in Newton, um, who come up with a way of beating carnival games, and they take down a pseudo-Disney, and it's called Bringing Down the Mouse. And it comes out <laughs> next summer. Um, and, you Why know, Newton, though? Can you defend Newton? I, 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 does Newton need defending? Um, no, no, no. I, I mean, we're here in Brookline. I know. You're here you know, at Tadex, I wanted a, a, little, a little private school with geeky kids, and that's what I chose because I know uh -huh. the Boston area well. But really, you know, young people don't get into math. Uh, young boys don't really aren't into reading. And so I wanted to create a series aimed at, I was a geeky kid in high school and, and in grade school, and 
bringing down the house has Vegas and gambling, so kids can't really read that, um, although they do. Um, so I, I made a version where, I, and it turns out most carnival games can be beaten by math and physics, so that's where that book came from. Are you ever frustrated? Someone was asking you backstage about, um, you know, do you write screenplays also? And you said, yes, but you don't write the screenplays of your book. So right. is that some frustrating divide for novelists where it's well, like, if only I could write the screenplay and it could be my perfect right. vision? The thing about Hollywood is Hollywood doesn't really want the author of the book anywhere near the movie. <laughs> the truth is, you're the least important person on that set. You're the right below the caterer in terms of importance. Um, <laughs> they want you to write the book, hand it to them, and then go away. Um, and is it because they feel you, you'd be too attached well, you're maybe and you're in love with your characters. Maybe you're not going to make changes. And, and they want to take it and go with it which direction they want. So I've, I've adapted one of my books that didn't get made. Um, I, every now and then I try my hand at a screenplay, but it's a very different form of writing. The truth is when you take that check from Hollywood, you have to be happy with that check. And you have to say it's their movie after that, and whatever happens with it happens. I've been very lucky that a guy like Aaron Sorkin you know, wrote, wrote the screenplay, or that 21 was made by Kevin Spacey, and people who were really wonderful at what they do. Um, so I've been lucky so far, but who knows what'll happen next. All right, so tell us, um, with our remaining minute or two here, uh, you know, the, your life sounds very glamorous, traveling to Las Vegas with people uh, with <laughs> money strapped to them, right, uh, right, right. hanging out on movie sets, but like, what is the actual day-to-day -day well, day -day -day writing life like? Uh, writing is a very lonely, horrible, painful, awful thing, right? I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like having a stomach virus. You sit in the room all day long trying to get something out, and then it... <laughs> You're not happy until it's done with, right? Um, I, I, I have two little kids, you know, a three and a half year old and a one and a half year old, and I spend uh, the time when I'm not with them locked in a, in a room all night long. I write at night um, and with music blaring and in the in the pitch black. And uh, it's a uh, and anybody who's a writer out there knows it's it's uh, it's not fun while you're doing it, um, but when you're done, that's where it gets exciting. And. Very last question, I promise, is just, sure. is this what you imagined when you were a kid growing <laughs> up? Did you think, okay, this is going to be my life? Oh, I want to write. a kid growing up, I just didn't want to get beat up. I think that was my goal, <laughs> was to get through, you know, not end up stuffed in a locker too many times. But I, I, I always wanted to be a writer since I can remember, and it ended up being very incredible. And, and the, the whole, you write a book about Facebook, you don't expect it to end up at the Oscars. Um, so it has been an incredible ride for me. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But it's, it's been amazing. So anybody out there who wants to be a writer, um, when it works out, it's, it's the most incredible thing in the world. It's just a lot of rejection along the way, I guess. Uh, cool. Uh, well, I think uh, afterwards, I'll have to in reintroduce you to Colin, because sure. he's still, he's been waiting for years for his <laughs> next movie, uh, Walk on Roll. Uh, <laughs> right. But Ben, this has been fantastic. Thank Thanks you very a lot much. For I really doing appreciate it. it. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs>